as a team do extremely well the previous uh tournament in gundam's grace we've seen that actually happen in pretty much every one here but you know what let's get into it we're actually going to be going to our first match of the day and that is going to be between actually one of our teams that has some of the most players remaining from their previous version skill issue which was in our previous tournament and of course they did very well in the previous pilot showdown that happened which we didn't even get a chance to talk about there's so much going on and they're going to be taking on tech dynasty which is two out of the previous six so a very different team yeah and you can see this is the map ban and this is the map pool for um our event this weekend we got flag fort underground command center thermal plant mountain r d quarry colony trading post that's the new addition taking place of uh that ministry of defense map and harbor city <laughs> but we are not seeing colony trading post Aww. unfortunately i love the map something about it. it it just the buildings just really do kind of uh in the scale of the Gundams and the mobile suits so well. Mountain R&D, one of our more popular maps when it came to last season, is actually going to get banned out as well. Yeah, I mean, it is a pretty chaotic map. We are going to go back to Flak Fort. We saw that a whole lot in Halloween Havoc, which was two events ago. We saw Flak Fort kind of as the classic starter map to test out your opponents. Uh, but of course, we see a ton of Flak Fort. We see a ton of Mountain R&D Lab, uh, and we see a good amount of quarry. So I expect to see those again. We saw those in the stats. I am really sad that we have the Colony Trading Post banned. Uh, I think it's my visually my favorite map of the entire game by kind of a long shot. Uh, and it, hopefully we see it at least at some point today. I mean, just, you know, having the entire like like the entire like skybox filled, of course, yeah. with, you know, the, the entire thing is, is, is so cool. And like you said, the buildings giving you that scale, which is something that I love about Harbor City. So hopefully we get to see it. I'm also really curious how these professional teams are going to be playing on that level because there are some pretty unique sites and pretty unique uh angles that i personally am really bad at <laughs> yeah, no 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 the first half of uh colony trading post is so unique um and it, it, it's difficult to see how teams are going to play that one defensively because there are basically two lanes right if you want to try and fight over that waypoint or if you want to try and get them immediately coming out from the spawn or do you want to play a little bit more uh cautiously and maybe try and play on that low site of uh site a or it's it's interesting again when it comes uh, to new maps being added on i'm always for the exploration but for right now we're just waiting on our first pick like we said it is going to be flak forts um and i believe it's going to be Tekka Tekka dynasty starting on on the offensive side this is a map that like you said wonder um that we are well uh versed in a lot of teams <laughs> setting us there for our first map as a good litmus test um, a lot of teams playing it very conservatively. No, no way in shape and form does it seem like you know teams will play it like uh, it is on uh, basically just casual matches. Harbor City, though, when it goes to map number two, that will be our second map. That one's going to be nice because, uh, again, I love seeing Jim Sniper, and Harbor City is one of those maps for it. Oh, yeah, it is the map for it. And Quarry will be our decider. Again, two of our most popular maps here, Flak Fort and Quarry. But Harbor City, we've seen it a lot less often. However, I feel like we've had a lot of really exciting matches on it. It's always one that I love to see. It was my previous visual favorite before Colony Trading Post. It's still very much up there for me. So I'm always a big fan of it. And like you said, uh, you know, we, 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 I think we expect to see a little bit more Jim Sniper just in general. But then uh, it, it tends to be mostly on that map. But the shots are always just, hmm delicious yeah importantly there was kind of like a, a passive buff to gym sniper uh with dom trooper actually getting nerfed down to 1100 hp actually putting it within critical headshot range and so he can no longer survive that so that's kind of important especially with the strength of our dom trooper players um that we've seen across all of our events yeah, there have actually been so many changes that, I mean, we can't even list them here, right? Uh, since our previous event, we have had, of course, season two, where there were just infinite numbers of changes. And then we've even had like a patch since then that has toned some other things, uh, you know, up or down. So uh, realistically, this is going to be potentially a really, really different meta. Of course, previously in most of these events, especially because we have had Zaku 2 Melee banned, it's been a somewhat similar-ish meta uh, over the previous one, over Gundam's Grace that happened in uh, late November we saw uh, some changes with like maybe some less Sazabis, maybe some more uh, like flex rolls. But overall, we've seen a lot of the same suits. We saw a lot of Pale Rider. We saw uh, what uh, Ashamar. We saw Mephis. We saw Doms, of course. We saw, I mean, it was, it was pretty much a, a 
relatively similar makeup. I think things could definitely have changed by now. I've been seeing some good teams uh, changing some things around. I mean, one of the biggest ones is that Mihiru, of course, for a while was uh, really wild with that extremely large explosion radius. But then, of course, Mihiru got toned down as well. Still, it's a lot better than it was in season one. So I'm just excited to see everything today. You know, new teams, new new suits. We haven't even talked about new Gundam, if that's going to be meta, everything. I'm just pumped. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a new Gundam. I feel like I haven't seen him uh, used to great effect when it came to just playing my casual matches so far. So I don't know exactly where I land on that. I think just having the kind of standard, um, having, uh, of course, your Pale Rider player along with an Exia, even though Exia did receive some uh, mm -hmm. nerfs. In this map in particular, for Flak 4, its mobility is just unmatched, being able to go for that flank and draw teams back. And so I fully ex uh, expect to see a lot more of that. Turn A Gundam was actually one of the Gundams uh, and mobile suits that we got to see a lot more of in our last event. And I think that caught me off guard more than anything else. Yeah, they, it is quite a suit, but it looks like they're already in this, and it looks like we are going. So we are going to see, again, uh, pretty similar to exactly what you said, uh, very, very close to what we've been seeing, except for we do see a Barbados, of course, which we saw a little bit, and uh, there is some battling going on. It's a little bit hard to see exactly where everybody is, but they've already pushed into the main site on A. It does look like a lot of this push is being shut down, but they're trading one for one, and the deaths on defense here are just huge, so hard to recover from. Yeah, that's a, that's a Suzabi going down. That's a front, uh, tank front line, but take a look at that Barbados going in does not get the instant finish so they might be able to get a dark infester back on up and they'll have the response coming in as well they just need to get topped off and then try and charge on in tilter is a little bit low but he does have the health pack to work off you can see that turn a trying to really utilize that charged up shot right now not really getting great damage right now it's all about the neutral ba uh, neutral play yeah, they, this is that that little gate, that little front gate is just such a, a hard spot to break through. But wow, a great dash attack all the way up onto that defensive platform. And that is going to be a huge start to a push. We do see Davester up there, of course, being on the Rebados, getting taken down very, very quickly. Every single person up on the side of Tekka. And that is going to be oh, actually a one down, a trade one for one. Again, like I said, the defense run back is so, so much longer here. Davester going down once again. Looks like he got picked up, but they are driven off the high ground. And that is going to be much harder to defend. Luckily, they managed to clear out almost all of Tech Dynasty, and they will have a little bit of time to reset here. Yeah, I mean, importantly, going in with that Exia, being able to get that knockoff on that pill, right? You saw how well, though, the defense was able to back off uh, from that position. They lost that high ground, and then they decided to try and play for picks in, at the end there. So it's going to be a full regroup right now coming out from the offense. You can see they're going to try and charge in from the front. We will have a couple units try to go over to the left-hand side and try and challenge for that high ground, but the Exia goes in once more and knocks off that pale Rider. Ooh, yeah, and just barely getting out of there against that sweet, sweet Exia movement. But we do see the high ground Dom, which even, I mean, even with the nerf, is still such a strong suit, especially with that high ground getting extra damage. Nice. We are going to see the overhead grab connect, and that is going to be another person down. But three G maneuvers available on the defensive side here for skill issue. This could be very, very hard to break through, especially two more people going down on the offensive side for Tekken Dynasty. The brawls are happening, but they're just not able to make anything from it so far. Yeah, the Hades will uh, ultimately net them a few kills, but you can see now the offense is coming back on and losing out on your Pale Rider. You lose so much space. You can see now the offense pushing forward. Nox is there once again, holding around the angle. And he can charge up if he wants to, but Gasman is doing a great job so far on that turn A of forcing them back. And so they won't be able to crack open point A. And with a minute left, send us on over to point B. Yeah, and we do see, of course, Nox now on this team. Well, you know, one of the top players that we've seen on quite a few successful teams so far. Uh, this is going to be, I think, the third team in maybe three tournaments. That could be right, could be wrong, but there's not a whole lot of time left here for this push. Again, this is going to be another tough choke. We do see the G-Mini reactivated for the Exia, but gets taken down. And it looks like it may have just been the wide range of this A uh, turn A G-Maneuver that just shuts down that offensive push and wastes at least one G-Maneuver. Yeah, Jay Slay can come back, and uh, that's going to be the only G maneuver up for the defense. But with two minutes and 24 seconds left to go, it's huge. That Screaming Nimbus, again, when you get into these corridors, can do so much work. Not really able to get that, uh, get that 
uh, turret over the other side, but Davester is still holding the corner for now. And here comes the offense charging forward. Davester is low and he will fall. J Slay has that screaming Nimbus popped, I believe, but he hasn't found much quite yet. Nox still getting into the back line right now. Killer Umbrellas is low and he will get caught out. The offense now starting to charge forward. Have to deal with the Victus here, but you can see Nox doesn't want anything to do with that turn A Gundam. He'll regroup with his squad now. They've got five members on the point. Oh, this is so hard to be break back from. All right, we're going to see the jump over from the Barbados, but it just immediately gets murked. Three players on the high ground, all on the side of skill issue. Two on the low ground, but they really need to take advantage of this. Oh, they were going to see the push down. The G maneuvers are just not available. The only one we have is Davester, but he went down so immediately, he didn't have a chance to use it. We're at three ticks already. They need to find one big moment here. They need to at least contest until Davester can come back, maybe try to clean up with this G maneuver. They are going to at least push back most of the squad of Tekka, but this is so, so close to a victory. However, we only have a minute and 12 seconds left. Yeah, three ticks were taken up by the offense. Now, Jay Slay does not have uh, his G maneuver available currently, but he might be able to buy some time for that. Killer Umbrellas has a Hades in seven more percent. Tilter has that Ashmar punch and he actually utilizes it before he goes down. And it looks like it's gonna be a trade back and forth. Dave Sir needs to back away, but he will get taken out that high ground is gone. Killer Umbrellas has not been able to get up there, unfortunately, for his squad, and so he now has to play on the point. 40 seconds left to go, though, for the offense to try and regroup for one last push. Oh, that is super unfortunate. We see Hawklight on the Dom go down. That means that he will almost guaranteed not be back for this final push. They do not have time to wait for that. This is going to have to be a 5v6. Only one G maneuver, and then it's going to be on the side of the Methus. Pretty much through the entire team, both teams here. Now, who is it going to be used on? It's got to be used really effectively. Like I said, 5v6. The, the Dom's running back. Not going to be here in time. We're going to see two pushing the high ground. The Trinity jumps down, but the tank being on the high ground might not be the most effective thing here. Yeah, they've already lost out on two. That's Gasman and Hawklight going down. The energy cable as well for a robot not even utilized for this. What a few seconds remaining of defenses here now. They've got that high ground. Evictus is up there. And if he wants to, in just another second, he can pop that <laughs> butterfly. But the defense will hold here on a point B but for the offense. They were able to at least secure themselves three ticks. Yeah, that was a really great first push, uh, but they just weren't able. I mean, this was a really interesting match in general, first round, you know, of the tournament, because we saw a whole lot of really, really well whole held pushes from the side of skill issue. They were defending really, really well. But then as soon as Tekka Dynasty found their like one moment that they really, really wanted, it just it, it, it stuck, you know, like they got one good push finally on point A and it was just all they needed. Then they got one good push on point B and it got almost the entire way, just barely not quite all four ticks. Uh, but then past that, you know, they were just held off really well. And one big thing is, yeah, like Hawkeye getting picked before that final push was huge. Uh, you really want that Dom, despite the slight nerfs to Dom over the past two last two patches, I suppose. It's still, of course, a very key member of every single team. Yeah, still one of the best duelists. Um, I mean, taking this aside, uh, just the amount of AOE damage you can dish out along with having that hit scan laser to finish things off. I mean, you could put so many people within critical with a, a critical range with just one good direct connect. But now we're going to go ahead and uh, head on over to point A once again. We got to see how much uh, importance was placed on this high ground for our Pale Rider players. We'll see, though, if they want to try and uh, mimic that on the defensive hold here. And it looks like they uh, might be uh, going for it. Now, the huge difference, we didn't get to really talk about it in terms of the compositional difference. The fact that one is one squad is playing Sazabi and the other is not. And we haven't really been able to see this uh, Sazabi really get that much value. Yeah, ooh, a timeout. Interesting. Uh, this is so, you know what? We, we barely got a chance to talk about this, but obviously we're all very excited because it's the first time that we get spectator mode. No more uh, having to look through Discord uh, calls for video streams. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, for adding this to the game. But also there is a timeout. Uh, it looks like they needed a moment for something, which is really cool that we actually get a chance to see the uh, timeout feature actually happening. But we got a chance to see, like, for example, some of the stats earlier, which was really cool. That's something that we didn't get the chance to see. In fact, that's something you don't even get a chance to see in, uh, you know, casual or ranked games even is uh, mid-game stats or just the stats of your teammates in general. So it is really, really cool to be able to see that from these teams. We got to see just how much damage the defensive team did it looked like it was maybe like at least 150 percent of the damage of tech dynasty 
but uh, we get to see these cool wide shots. We get to go from player to player, everything. I'm just really happy. Uh, shout outs again, of course, to production for dealing with not having the spectator mode previously, but now huge shout outs to the actual devs for implementing it for us. Yeah, I mean, I was super glad uh, when the game initially launched, wait, what, back in September, October, that uh, at least we had custom matches at the very least. Yeah. Uh, but these iterative changes, these additions that have been going on over the last six months have been fantastic for the scene overall. And especially, yeah, you always need a timeout mode or some sort of timeout feature. So that's fantastic. It looks like we are ready to get back into things. And so now with four minutes on the clock, we still do not have a zombie on the other side. We don't have a pale rider, actually. And so they could try to run quad flank if they want to get Tilts or Bone Kel, Davester, and Killer Umbrellas into the back line to try and fight for it, or just instantly just try and uh, get that Pale Rider off that high ground ledge. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I think here that they're going to have to play around, of course, is just having Gavester on offense. Uh, having the Barbados can be a huge boon or a huge, uh, I guess, issue, depending on whether or not you can find those right angles. Now, it is kind of easier, I would say, to attack this point A with a Barbados than some of the other points that we're going to see because there are so many tight corners, but we'll see if it pays off. We're actually going to be on this perspective right now, and we can see there's quite a few oh, options here. It doesn't quite get the slam, but uh, it's not going to be paying for it that much. It's going to be able to retreat out the door yeah uh they ended up losing out um on their on bone kill initially and so they just needed to go for the reset but you can see that the threats of the barbados is always going to be there and so uh, you kind of have to keep that in mind davester is actually in on the point right now and might be on top of that Sazabi. that's not a battle that you really want to take he's getting flanked now by hawklight and he has to get out of there yeah, this is going to be unfortunate. Again, this looks like this could just be a stagger almost. This was not a coordinated push. We just see Davester come in. Going to be taking out at least one suit. Didn't get the destruction. Okay, it ended up happening anyway, but still a one-for-one -one trade, and that's something you really don't want as Barbados. Still, this brawl is happening. Not a lot of damage really on either side, considering the fact that they're kind of just shooting back and forth. We are going to see Hawklight go down as well on the defense, but everybody else just kind of healing up. Uh, we are going to see at least one of the players on offense be able to run back after being destroyed and this push looks like it might take yeah gas man has gone down though now they need to get dark infester back into position but they're not going to allow that as j slay is on point two ticks now coming in as the contest comes out from the defense davester has been putting in work so far with this barbados just constantly being that threat there's a third and now they're going to be able to move on to point b with about a minute advantage for what um, our last offensive side looked like. And so you can see Evictus instantly charging forward, trying to get a stagger if someone had a forward spawn, but it looks like the defense was able to back away. Dave, sir, with that armor now, trying to get into the back line, trying to create some chaos there as they have a full dive coming in. Yeah, we're going to see at least one connection, but once again, it's just going to be a one-for-one -one trade with Barbados. And I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, of course, for that to happen, but if you have the longer run back, that's when that starts to get really tough, and that is uh, what's going to happen on this point now. And we're going to see quite a few others now go down on the side of skill issue. It looks like they might have to regroup. This push is not going to hold for sure. Dark Infester, of course, one of the remaining members of Tech Dynasty that remained from all of the previous iterations of it is going to be still on that Pale Rider, holding this little choke point here as the uh, uh, side of skill issue starts to regroup. All the G maneuvers basically coming up. J-Slay is going to be the last one, actually, but here it is starting oh, oh, oh. and things open oh. with that butterfly. Now two kills already coming on in. Unfortunately, though, if it just isn't able to get much, you can see them backing away. Robot is on the point by himself, but he's caught out by the Barbados. XCL going Trans Am, but he gets caught by that overhead throw of Evictus. That's going to be the second tick coming in now for skill issue. We can see that uh, Hawklight is getting so close now towards that screaming Nimbus, but he is losing out on bodies. He's going to charge on in, but he doesn't have the backup quite yet of the rest of his squad. Oh, actually gets dash attacked by the Exia out of that Screaming Nimbus, or maybe right at the very end, but gets destroyed regardless. And we're going to see a ton of players on the side of Tech Dynasty go down again. The Hades is going to end. We do see Essor up on this. I mean, literally, it's the last line of defense. It's not going to be enough. And that is going to be a win for skill issue with the beautiful push. That was that moment where they 
both teams popped that turn a g maneuver at the exact same time and it was just who could kill more with on both sides and everybody's just running away and scrambling that was hilarious but that's really what led to that final offensive push and i mean really really great offense from skill issue they didn't waste any sort of time even if they had you know failed quite a few more times they had a lot more leeway than it looked like tech dynasty did in the uh th their offensive push i should say yeah, I mean, they uh, moved over to the second point with uh, a minute advantage overall in time. But again, it just came down to uh, that G maneuver coordinate, uh, coordination at the end. They just had more. <laughs> they were able to open up with it. And you can see how uh, strong that turn A Gundam is on this point. But overall, as a unit, I just love it almost on every single map. Yeah, you were mentioning earlier uh, that we saw so much more of it in our previous event in Gundam's Grace, and it looks like we're going to continue with that. Uh, it has been, aside from the fact that, you know, we've had all these changes and there's been, I don't believe any single negative thing done to that suit. As far as I can remember, there's been so many changes, but uh, definitely nothing major. Uh, and we, we started seeing it more and more as time was going on. Now with all these changes, we're seeing even more and more, and you can see just that is one of the most impactful G maneuvers in the entire game, hands down. Uh, there are even points where it's stronger, where you're actually flying above roofs and you can't pick off the turn A Gundam, and that is just disgusting. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to preemptively be ready for it. Uh, so we, I assume, we're going to see a lot more of that suit today, and it, uh, it, it was very effective, I think, on both sides, realistically, from this matchup. Yeah, I think one of the other things that we really did note during um, our last event was just the strength of being able to collab, being able to shoot through units that charged um, damage. When teams are clumping up so much, moving through choke points, you can get so much value off of it. I mean, when we move on to maps like Mountain R&D or um, even uh, Thermal Plant, where teams are liable to group up a little bit more, you can see how much value you can get off of that charge rifle shot uh, of the turn A Gundam. Yeah, we saw that amazing moment from our last tournament where uh, we had two people lined up in a row trying to defuse that bomb on uh, one of the her. I guess. Yeah, no, we're not going to Sorry, we're not going there. We're going to Corey next. Uh, but oh, no, wait, it was on Corey. It was on Corey. Was on yeah, Corey. that's right. That's right. Sorry. My memory is so bad. It was like two months ago. That's way too long for me to remember correctly. But yeah, it was actually here. So we might get a chance to see it again uh, where two people were lined up trying to defuse the bomb. And there was just a single turn A that just carried that entire like moment, like planning the bomb, taking out two people, uh, managing to defend it all the way till it exploded. So that was just uh, an amazing moment. And they kind of like started the entire uh i guess boom of seeing a lot more turn a's not that it was necessarily because of that but i, I think that was my like defining moment i mean turn a is great because again you have like the self-reliability right like having the nano skin you don't have to rely upon your team uh, you have a lot more staying power you don't have to play around the packs as much and of course your own self peel with that overhead throw we got to see it a few times just in that first map alone how good it is um, but overall, I mean, it was not just the turn A's. We got to see why Dom is still widely used right now. That Screaming Nimbus, even though um, it hasn't been used to the greatest effect in that last map, you can see the value that it does actually bring. Getting that extra movement speed for your team, really um, get, making yourself extra tanky and just causing so much havoc. It's great to see that Dom is still in play because Dom was my first main when I started playing this game. Yeah, I mean, it is still extremely scary. So uh, we're going to continue to see that. But I mean, another thing, you know, I, I feel like we're talking about turning a lot, but it kind of is a, a huge point here. Uh, so we, of course, next, we're going to be moving on, I believe, to uh, Harbor City, where we are most likely going to be seeing some gym snipers. But also, we've seen a lot of teams go to the turn A, even in previous tournaments here, because uh, for anybody out there who isn't familiar with turn A, because it's such a weird suit, it does have no drop off is essentially like a sniper. It doesn't have a scope like a sniper but if your aim is ridiculous like a lot of these great players are then it is just as as strong as you could want in a secondary sniper position plus of course my favorite map for yeeting people off the map if you do happen to uh, get a nice overhead grab uh you can sometimes throw people into the ocean and that is the best feeling in the world <laughs> yeah this is also a great map for the methods we've been seeing a lot of methods today i'm surprised you know not so much a uh, unicorn here that might be a bit more maybe map specific um, mm -hmm. If we go over to Quarry, we get to see a lot more Unicorn where teams are bunching up a little bit more um, there. And so if we continue to see the uh, Methus and Ashmar play um, on Harbor City, they are fantastic. Being able to get flank lines, or at least for the Ashmar to be able to float around and maybe not play so much around the choke points that you actually have to kind of funnel yourself into, especially in that transition from point A to point B. 
Yeah, even just having the threat of the Flyers. I mean, you know, of course, we see a lot of the really strong teams like in in, in low rank. You see people obviously uh, like sneak around, uh, but on the high level, you know, just be able to pop over and throw like a flame grenade and just help break that choke point or to just be able to you know pop over, maybe get like a shot off on somebody who's low and is running around to that health pack or just even having the threat of the fact that you can do that is so huge because now suddenly people can't just sit there and just tunnel vision on that choke point. They have to back up a little bit. At least somebody needs to be looking uh, slightly to the side just in case somebody manages to sneak over. So uh, yeah, this uh, Ashmore, of course, great on every single level, but we are undoubtedly going to see it on harbor city as well but let's see oh wow we can actually see live both of the picks this is beautiful yeah uh one thing to note again um looks like we are gonna have that zazabi pickup coming out uh for tekka and I, I don't think we got that much value off of it really it's nice to have that tanky mm -hmm. body but again you have to respond to um so much hold on one second yeah. here uh it looked like we have a little bit of technical issue but yeah uh, so we're seeing two different uh two different compositions basically coming out from either side and they were hovering over actually the rx 78 for tekka yeah that is another suit that we saw a little little bit more of and one that i am a huge fan of just because it is so flexible right you can use the uh uh, the shield, of course, to stop yourself from getting picked off in situations where maybe you're getting pushed and you just need a little bit more time to get back. You can kind of use it to shield allies if they're being, you know, revived or if potentially they are, uh, you know, trying to like disarm a bomb or plant a bomb or something like that. Uh, or you can use, of course, the hyper hammer to get rid of shields or stop flankers. And on top of that, it's just a high damage suit with a really cool uh, G maneuver that can be huge impact. It doesn't seem like they are actually going to go ahead and roll out with that RX-72, but for the defense right now, the Methus is there, the Barbados, Turn A, Jim Sniper, Dom, and Ashamar. It's not really changing anything up. It's going to come down to the offense here. Now, teams, of course, on the defensive end, play this one a little bit differently than you would on your casual matches. You can see them actually holding back from that first corner. They have a lot more health packs to play off of instead of just that mega health pack, but the first knock comes in, and that is the difference maker here. Now, with that Dom nerf, 1,100 HP, one headshot, that's all you need. Yep, yep, you mentioned it before, and it is exactly that. Okay, we're going to see another spot landed, but uh, it's not going to be enough to... Okay, there we go. It does get fully get the pick this time, and so far, both of the picks have been on the... Well, I guess you should say the players that have been picked have been on the defensive side, or sorry, on the offensive side. Ah, I'm mixing myself up here, but uh, these, this defensive sniper has just been landing absolutely everything. I do believe that might be Nox. We're going to see a little bit more of a push here, and finally, we're going to see that Barbados go down on the defensive defensive side which is at least going to be something uh, again really strange uh, to you know just hard lock Barbados it takes a lot of skill to use it effectively on every single map this is going to be one of those maps the method so goes down in exchange yeah particularly on this map right like you might have options to be able to get into the back line but uh, for here I feel like he's going to play a little bit more peel than anything else and when it comes down to point b that might be actually where he's uh, able to really open up with the entire skill set of the Barbados but you can see now mm -hmm. Zabi charging up they are onto point a they haven't secured a tick quite yet but you can see this is Zabi trying to find a little bit more nice stun with the axe and they're going to go ahead and charge forward the defense has such a long run back here that this should just be an easy point a for the offense to take yeah this is i think it's a little bit more expected uh, when we see teams that are evenly matched or close to evenly matched that a is going to eventually be taken but this is the point that is the most important of course b uh, and this choke point in particular being able to break through this is going to be by far the most difficult thing and like you said this might be the moment where the barbados is huge on defense because one leap over that wall that now the offensive team has to be ready for which i think we actually maybe did just see mm. mean multiple suits going down yeah not quite gonna get that chance tried that tried exactly what i was saying but we are gonna see the butterfly come out we're gonna see the g maneuver we're gonna see the entire full push through from tech dynasty here on offense Wow, and they utilize so many defensive ultimates on the end there. G maneuvers now are, are just completely gone off the board here. All members of our offense now, all six mobile suits are there. They are already secured second tick, and now you can see them scrambling just to try to get back onto the points. I don't even know if they're going to be able to touch it. There they go. They get in. The Barbados in the back line now, but he gets kited once more and is instantly taken out. It looks like it's a good peel back coming out from the offense here, but the turn a defensive butterfly B. Being used just to clean things up. Three ticks have been picking up though. 
Yeah, I actually thought that was a done deal. I mean, a full team wipe into an entire push onto the point here. And this can actually be a pretty tough point to get back from. You get choke pointed on offense if you have to get through this point again. Once they've already kind of taken, uh, you know, the position, the high ground there. <laughs> we are going to see the Rabbitohs go down. But uh, there was a great hole. It was a great retake. However, there's still one suit down now. And the entire team got to get through that choke point again for free. We're going to see a lot of shots coming off here from the turn A. Uh, they need to find one big pick and then make the push in the push is gonna happen and they've kind of taken this high ground again we are gonna see at least one g maneuver pop off maybe two yeah screaming the mist was utilized just to get in there Zabi super low and they don't have any heals for this because the methus is down so that's gonna be another reset coming out from the offense now energy cable was utilized on the other side for the defense here but with that opening now they're able to push back on to this choke point two minutes remaining now all they need, though, is one tick on the other side. You can see Ashmar being able to utilize that transform to try and get an angle above, but without having too many medkits or to be able to play off of, you can see how long it takes to reset now. They do have the Hades, I believe, available here, but you can see Turn A just really able to utilize that corner, the Ashmar trying to go up for that high ground, not be able to find anything off of this, but Turn A, once again, just showing the value that you can get off of this unit. Yeah, and that's honestly a spot that can be really hard to hold because there's no healing close to you. You have to jump all the way back, all the way off to either direction. But the fact that Turn A has its own self-healing means that it's a great option for being able to hold that defensive position. Here we go, though. We're going to see the entire push. We are going to see the uh, Barbados uh, just sitting there on defense, holding that corner, which, of course, is one of its greatest strengths that can hold these tight corners. Uh, we saw the Pale Rider go down on the side of Tekka Dynasty, although we actually see the, I believe, the Dom fell off the map right there into the soup that's super unfortunate and that's going to be maybe oh, no. enough for them to start this push another suit down but we're getting trades for trades and there's the rx78 g maneuver yeah the napalm super napalm not actually finding anything there but they're able to at least force them back once more now the offense resetting for themselves they do have the turn a butterfly gundam available uh to utilize here that g maneuver is great for trying to open up this point, but you can see how well uh, the turning on the other side has really been able to zone them out uh, with his immense pressure. They do have to fall back just a little bit, and then now with just a few seconds remaining, you have to imagine they want to open up, but he's already at half HP. Yeah, and there we go. We're going to see the butterfly, the G maneuver activated. Let's see, one pick, two picks. We're going to we're actually see them fly away with the Methus saying, get away from me. I don't want to deal with this. And the Methus might actually take out. Yeah, that is going to be a, uh, a turn A going down, but that is more than enough picks to start things off. However, we're going to see the reverse butterfly from the other side, the G maneuver taking down again, two, three. This might be the end for this offense. We might see it go exactly to the same score that we saw last time with three ticks and you know, we even saw the screaming nimbus just for good effect here saying you're not going to even get a chance i don't even know if that hit anybody but i don't think they're gonna be able to make it back in time we see one kind of close but with one second yeah not quite gonna make it even for that overtime yeah that was just a great uh composure coming out from the defense there uh once they were able to actually weather the storm right it looked like everything was going bad three ticks were picked up all six members of the offense were on the points they were able to open up and get back on, and then of course force their way back to that choke point. And so now we're gonna just go ahead and swap sides. We did get to see, of course, a double sniper composition coming out from either side, turn A along with that gym sniper, but it felt like once we did go on over to point B, teams don't value it as much. You could just really rely upon that turn A presence um, in and of itself. Yeah, I really love that about Gundam Evolution is that you can really like choose different team comps based on the situation i mean obviously you don't want to lose your g maneuver but there are a lot of maps where i feel like certain suits do really well on like half the map on one third of the map on particular choke points and i think this is just the greatest example right we we for sure almost always see double gym sniper on that first point there and then once we go to b it's like okay it's a little closer we're gonna try some different things and uh it does tend to work out but again i feel like between this game and the previous game we got a chance to see just how uh big the uh, turn a g maneuver can be and it was like G maneuver into counter G maneuver in both games, or sorry, at least in the previous two rounds to kind of show like, okay, whoever gets more kills with this, that's what matters. And look at that. You can see, wow, 22,000 damage leading the pack on the side of Gasman for Tekka. Uh, that is a lot of damage on that turn A.
Yeah, again, that butterfly, it's just so much value. I mean, there are a few units that can go for a full team wipe with their G maneuver. Turn A is definitely one of them. And of course, that brings to mind Zaka 2 Melee, which is in our competitive quarantine right now. But taking a look at the defensive hold, it does look like not much is going to change. We are going to see the Gym Sniper along with uh the uh with the turn a just to peek that corner for now we'll see if killer umbrellas will go ahead and swap off like we saw on the other side but nox is the one that's picking up once again for the defense there's that first pick tilter going down yeah that is uh, i mean the, the picks are everything here right i mean it's really hard for either team to make like full progress until one uh pick happens we are going to see the push kind of down the middle road we see sometimes the pushes down the middle road they're going left sometimes they just try to sneak all the way around the right side using the cover of the buildings but oh jumping away we see the barbados getting taken down luckily it at least jumped to safety looks like it's gonna get picked back up by the methus uh and it did manage to get its job done so we're gonna see a huge push oh no gasman is being thrown we're gonna have to turn a versus turn a and it looks like it just went into a tumble there and evictus now is going to have a chance to try to fight back against this offense just chunking chunking every single person on that point this looks like it might be an actual hold for point a yeah it was just a really nice uh, cc chain onto gas man there uh, but you can see now they are losing out on some bodies nox getting the revenge kill onto killer umbrellas on that run back a uh, second point excuse me the second tick actually being delayed for now but as that dom stops off the point he's getting chased down by that turn a hawk light is trying his best to survive but he will ultimately get chased down jay say jay slay excuse me picking that one up the third tick is about to come in now for skill issue here but they still have to deal with these tanky bodies asor is here and he's got the heal of a robot to actually keep him topped off for the most part and of course again around this point there are so many health packs to really be able to utilize here as nox finds one more pick on to Victus Killer Umbrellas does answer back though. Oh, gets a little bit of a CC here on Tilter, but not going to be enough to actually pull anything off. And it looks like with all of these picks, defense is probably going to just back up and yeah, give up this site for now uh, and just try to at least get back to this choke point. And this is actually a big issue for them. They lost a few suits on this defense right as it was taken, right as point it was taken. So this might be an immediate push through this choke point. We are going to see the immediate sneak uh -oh. over, but I don't know if this is the best offensive position for the gym sniper. We're probably going to see a switch at this point. Yeah, mistakes were made there, but at least he went for it at this point. That does allow uh, Tekka, though, to try and reestablish themselves until a pick comes out. And there it is, a turn A butterfly opening things up. Evictus about to find one more. It looks like the rest of the squad is here to follow up on it. Hawklight going down now. And it's very similar story to what we had in our first uh, half here, but they weren't able to cleanly clean up quite yet. Tekka ends up losing out on Dark Infester. And now they're back onto the point. Nice! Uh, Grab from behind as they chase him down. They've got four members on the point. They'll be able to back away. Asor has gone down, though. Unfortunately for Tekka here, as now skill issue continuing to push onto the point. Oh, yeah, and we're seeing the screaming Nimbus. That's going to put Davester into a down state. And this is going to at least be, uh, I think, one more pushback on the side of the defense. Great take back. And yeah, just before the second tick was pulled off. Remember, again, just basically, you can see right there, just on the score, it wasn't quite taken on the offensive side for Tekka Dynasty. So we don't need to see skill issue get all the way. Just, uh, th I don't know, like three fourths plus another half of that little quarter. Yeah. Killer Umbrellas hasn't swapped off that gym sniper yet, though, and so that's kind of surprising. Never mind, there it is. As soon as I mentioned it, he is going to go ahead and pick up that Exia. So a little bit more backline presence and, of course, verticality as well. So if you really do need a challenge uh, for that backside B uh, high ground, you can definitely do that for now. The Ashmore on the right-hand side knocks being chased down. It looks like Screaming the Mist will be utilized, but the rest of the team have not charged up. Even though the space is created there, you can see that the defense were able to actually just fall back on that and uh, not really have to worry about it. Yeah, and that's going to be kind of an unfortunate, maybe waste. I mean, it looks like a lot of mm, suits on both sides really are going down right here. We actually have to see, <laughs> we have to see the turn a run away and get the heal. But yeah, you're going to have to run away regardless. So that's a really unfortunate waste of what can be one of the most impactful G maneuvers in the game with that screaming Nimbus, especially on this site where you can potentially knock some people into the water. You can get them caught in these corners, like where this health pack is. But we're not going to have that for mm, at least another 40 seconds, probably 30 seconds. Yeah, and there's a minute 40 seconds remaining here for skill issue and remember they were not able to secure that second tick and so now they still have to secure basically 50 more percentage points on point b to get that win here 
Um, throughout all of this, though, you can see now the jump over coming on out, and there's only one player there to try and deny it, and that's the Sazabi, but he can't really do much about it. Dave Sir now in the back line has a lot of room to work with, but it's the turn A that he has to run away from. That overhead throw was missed as Evictus does find a knock onto Asor, and now a Dark Infester going down. Here comes the butterfly out from Evictus to open things up, and that's going to be skill issue now. Charging forward to try and find a few more picks as teams are scrambling in. Second uh, tick coming on in. In. Here's the third, but they need a few more percentage points coming on in. Jace Lane now charging forward. They've got that screaming Nimbus opening things up. He's trying to knock them off, but he's not getting the value quite yet. A robot getting the res onto one, trying to keep his team still alive here as that butterfly comes out from Gasman this time around. And it looks like the defense will be able to hold as Gasman picks up three. Yeah, now only 30 seconds left. They don't need, I mean, they got to the third tick, it looks like, uh, but they're actually still holding the site. It looks like potentially the defense pushed up a little bit far forward, but now with only 25 seconds left, it looks like the offense has maybe staggered themselves a little bit too much. This might not be enough. This could potentially go to overtime since it's this close an actual score. 15 seconds, we can see they're making one final push. There is maybe enough time for this Ashmar to try and fly over to try and at least enable overtime. Eight seconds left. You've got to move now looks like killer umbrellas is going to be the first one to go down tilter does have his g maneuver but he only finds one and someone needs to get on the oh, point no. no that's going to be tech dynasty sending us to map number three oh no i can't believe that, that actually i know this this is the, the weirdest thing ever to say but that could have absolutely been a a punch an ashmore punch g maneuver to maneuver onto the point and that would have for sure gotten there in time to start the overtime and i know that obviously that's a little bit of a waste but hey you know you do whatever you can do to get that overtime because that is all that matters at that point and that is uh i mean i understand it was a, it was a, a juicy punch to get you know just seeing that single target there but you know somebody had to be on point somebody had to get on point right there maybe there was some miscommunication it looks like there was enough time even maybe just like the ashmar flying over or somebody just managing to do something but uh, uh it's unfortunate you hate to see it but you know you know, I do love to see is a three map set yeah and um uh, i'm trying to remember exactly what our third map was it's going to be actually quarry uh for the decider here and that's just so surprising because it's typically um for our events where you know we get two zeros all day long for day number one and then in the grand finals that's where we get that third map uh, but no this time around it's going to be our first match of the event where we actually go to map number three yeah and especially with such a close game too i mean you, you love to see it i mean that was really 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 close within the final one quarter of the score that you needed for that map so uh we we tend to see Sometimes some more dominant games on Harbor City, uh, but just with the way that they've played on both of the previous maps, even though it was, it was, I would say a little bit less close on Flak Fort, I feel like we're going to have a really good match. And they, of course, none of these teams decided to go any of the like domination missions. They decided to go entirely the kind of like push objective missions. We started off with the point capture and then going to another point capture. And then third, we're going to go to a destruction. So uh, we are going to get kind of a similar pace. And I think Corey is kind of a similar level to the you know not too close quarters it's going to be i'd say more close quarters than some of these other levels but overall it's going to be i think pretty similar i think we're in for a good match yeah especially for a squad that um is sticking with this barbados pick i think quarry is going to be fantastic for them mm -hmm. um there's it's a much easier i would say to play um barbados on this map than uh, particularly their harbor city where you have a lot of open sight lines a lot of the snipers can see you coming from a mile away you did see that he did have some difficulty in the end they're trying to get into the back line um with that barbados but here in particular especially on what i i believe point b that barbados on that initial plant is so strong yeah yeah i i, I actually can't believe almost that they decided to stick with that barbados on uh, you know for dave stir on the push for point a uh, i mean on defense at least you can kind of hide in the buildings and if anybody gets close to you you just smack them but uh to actually take that on offense and run with it that is some real true dedication and you know these of course are all great players a lot of these players have placed extremely high in a lot of the previous events it's not like this is just like some sort of mean pick uh you know we we do know of course that as a player who's been playing the barbados for quite a while and i mean you love to see it but i do agree with you that it, that it was i would say a disadvantageous point to 
be playing that suit and we're going to go down to maybe the best of all of the situations to be playing that suit uh especially you know the start of quarry has so many of those walls to jump over i always like to liken the start of quarry to almost like a uh, like a paintball like speedball type map where there's a bunch of just these like kind of these straight like pieces of cover these straight walls that you have to manually get around and so we anybody who can get over them or uh, in, uh, i mean realistically just over them is it, going to have such a huge advantage as far as like the surprise factor uh uh, plus, then there's less places to get away here than even like that B choke point on Harbor City. So, you know, we see a lot of people holding back that box. If there's one Barbados jump over into a, uh, you know, a slam, that could be like three suits. And then that could be the point, And then that could be the game. So uh, I'm excited to see it. But what do you think about the fact that we are still seeing the Sazabi on uh, the side of Tekka Dynasty? Because we, we've kind of been going back and forth about this over the past three events, kind of really. Yeah, even though like he's received some buffs, ultimately I just don't feel like he's kind of in the state that you need him to be. Uh, the passive buff, with, especially with the nerf that came into RX seventy eight, right? Um, he doesn't have the RX seventy eight now has what a three second longer cooldown on the hyper hammer means that you're a little bit safer to play this as zombie. But with Barbados still in line, with um, uh, with Exia still being utilized here, you can you. you he fell a lot out of favor um, over our last two events. Saw a little bit of uptick in the last one, though, uh, during Gundam's Grace. But overall, I feel like, you know, there are a lot more better options right now. Um, being able to play a bit more mobility focused um, instead of clumping up and be, uh, playing Death Ball that we kind of expected the meta to be two months ago, but it did not pan out that way. So I feel like Sazabi might be one of the weaker points so far for the team, but it, it's not a huge sticking point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, the teams are 1-1, so it's not like any of these picks for any of these teams are like, oh, this is a throw or anything. It's just it's just interesting to think about all the interactions, per se. And actually, between those two picks, you know, kind of the unique picks of the teams, the Sazabi and the... Uh, the Barbados, because the Barbados is, of course, in its own way, like you said, a counter to the Sazabi. So I'm surprised we haven't actually seen like uh, either a change or like kind of like a solo targeting because of that. But here we go. We're actually going to see the comps uh, off the bat. And we are going to see pretty much exactly what we saw previously. I don't think I see anything too different. Oh, actually, we're going to see a, a Barbados on both sides here. Gasman switching from the turn A to the Barbados. I'm surprised because, again, we were mentioning how strong turn A ended up being on this map in particular during our last event. But hey, he wants to play Brawler versus Brawler. This is a bit more of a death ball. Try to create openings for Dark Infester and particularly on um, on that Pale Rider. Now we do see that a lot of teams don't really even try to contest that high ground. So that will leave it available for Tekka Dynasty if they want to try and get him up there. But Davester is actually camped up there with that Barbados for now. But here comes the first dive into the back line. Astor stays alive, but not for long. Oh, it looks like three members will go down for Tekka Dynasty here. Now they're just going to have to reset here on the push. Yeah, that was a really cool push. I mean, that was basically exactly what I was talking about. You know, this box that we're seeing right here is exactly what I was talking about. We see a ton of groups, uh, you know, choose Unicorn Gundam and they group up back there. Of course, we're not going to see the Unicorn Gundam here, but, uh, you know, one jump over into a slam could really put a lot of damage on that team. And we almost saw it, but it was an amazing reaction from the side of Tekka Dynasty to uh, not get, yeah, I'm sorry, from uh, skill issue to not get hit by Tech Dynasty's push. But here we go, going for the second push. Yeah, Infestor was able to actually uh, rip apart that um, that Barbados who's trying to hold the high ground there. And it looked like it was a two-pronged attack this time around. A little bit more coordinated for Tech Dynasty here as he finds one more. They've got the waypoint as well. Now they're barreling forward for that A site. And this is going to be fantastic because, again, they do have a lot of mobility. They have a lot of uh, different units that can actually contest for that high ground. So Evictus shouldn't have this for free, but they have to deal with Dave's turn to the back line. You can see them trying to peel for the back, and oh. somehow that grab actually misses at the end. Oh, no, the fighting game player and me seeing a command grab just barely with is uh, immediately painful. But uh, this does look like it's going to still be a hold. I think I don't think enough of the uh, players in the side of skill issue went down, but we're going to see the immediate transition over for Tekka Dynasty to be pushing B, which is a much more common push that we've seen on broadcast. Oh, we're going to see the duel and, oh. and we're going to see the escape from Davester, the 1v1, the slam, but Davester doesn't get off anything. However, we're going to see the reverse grab and that is going to be a one for one trade, the Barbados Classic. Yeah, it's still looking great for skill issue now here on the defense here as uh, the butterfly was actually used by Evictus. And this is uh, one of the hard points as to really utilize that 
If you're not on the second floor with that turn A Gundam J Slay, though, winning out on his 1v1, actually gets the help of his Pale Rider player now. And you can see now the uh, offense, they've got some G maneuvers online, but they are just staggering here and they can't do this. They are starting to run out of time. They've got a minute and 45 seconds to work with and they're still losing out on players. The make charge is going down on point A though. Yeah, it looks like it was planted, but like I mentioned earlier, it looks like point A is, uh, it can be a very tough one to defend. It's, it's, it's a very it's a strange point, right? We didn't see the B because the brawl, I think just is a little bit more consistent for both sides as whoever wins the brawl, but there's so many angles on A. This can be really, really tough for, for both sides, right? It, this is just not gonna be easy for anybody. We are gonna see immediately two players go down on the side of skill issue. Nox is sitting up on top actually, holding the high ground, kind of defending with the defender spot and all oh, look at this holding the tight corners is gas man with barbados very very smart getting ready for potentially maybe the counter plant if a did manage to get i guess disarmed yeah they're running out of time though 15 seconds left and there are so many g maneuvers online nox has that punch just to come in in that last second to try and stop the defuse astor has actually popped out those funnels as well and now you can see how tanky the Sazabi can be especially playing around a health pack only a few seconds remaining but no one is able to touch that point Gasman is there to interrupt and now we're going to second half of the map now killer umbrella does end up finding one but you can see he's getting chased down along with tilter as well and this is a bad stagger yeah this is one of the worst things that can happen is you uh, uh commit a little bit too much to a defense that maybe just isn't even going to happen it is not even going to work sometimes you just have to accept that you need to move back and hold a different choke point but right now, it looks like we're getting a little bit of a regroup on both sides. Davester, once again, not quite getting the shot that he needs. He is going to get that health pack right as it spawns. Amazing timing. So he's going to distract some players in here. Gasman on the other Barbados, uh, just jumping around. Might get taken down, but again, just barely escaping. Very nice mobility on the sides of both Barbadoses. That's going to be two going down for the offense, though. And now they haven't been able to even get onto the point quite yet, despite... Uh, the defense actually falling back and almost getting staggered there. They have been able to reestablish themselves. They've got three G maneuvers online. Killer Umbrella is also close to that 80s as well with two minutes left to go. Honestly, they have so many uh, G maneuvers available just to win out fights with uh, utilizing one. Dave, sir, try to take the 1v1. <laughs> can say in the back line. He was trying to go for that waypoint, but it looks like they won't be able to keep that up for themselves. You know, we were talking about the potential, like, uh, the interactions between these two suits, and there we go. If you uh, don't get your shot, then, of course, the, the great aim on the side of SR is going to uh, melt you pretty quickly if you are that close to them. So, uh, good stuff. But here we go. Offense has a minute, 30 seconds left. They are going to be pushing through this choke point, which can be a very scary spot. But again, Davester not quite getting the shot that he needs. We are going to see. It looks like that was the G maneuver, and we're going to see, oh, so much of the offense going down. I would have have to assume there's probably enough of the offense going down that this is going to be retaken yeah this is going to be retaking waypoint and now we are going to have to start fresh anew we are going to see some g maneuvers going down but that was still not that many on the side of the defense you know that was mainly davester's uh g maneuver evictus is about to be up we're actually about to be five up on the side of defense for g maneuvers yeah, this is looking really bad for Tekka Dynasty. They have a minute and they haven't even been able, been able to touch a point yet. Like I said, for skill issue, they have all the tools available for them. Uh, Screaming Nimbus is probably what's going to be popped here more than anything else. You can see Jace Lane now starting to set up for it, uh, waiting for them to try and funnel on in. It might be a last minute dash. They really only have one fight left. They were able to at least secure the waypoint for themselves, but I don't even know if it's going to matter here now. Five G maneuvers online, and for Tekka Dynasty, they don't have one even close. Gasman, maybe, but the Screaming Nimbus has been used just to stop it. Uh, the uh, Mega Charge going down, there's the Butterfly as well. Everything is getting thrown against the wall. Looks like the only thing not used, never mind, the Hades is going to get popped at the last second as well. Now, with only 15 seconds remaining, that's a full team wipe onto Tekka Dynasty. Skill issue have not taken over the waypoint quite yet, but... This is still might just be enough for them. Yeah, there is a chance to at least walk over, but this isn't going to be where, you know, just like uh, point capture where you just have to touch the point. Like you have to actually start playing the bomb. So, wow, okay, hold on a minute. They looks like we actually might get an arm on a mega charge. I was talking about how difficult it was, but somehow pulls it off on the B side. We're still going to see a majority of the offensive side going down, but a ton of players on defense as well going down. And it does look like we've got at least one suit still up there just guarding that B side, maybe two, three, four, 
actually. It looks like offense is going to start getting a pretty good angle on defending B, and this is suddenly not quite as easy of a win on defense. Yeah, Asor has his funnels up. Gasman is close to his ultimate as well, and he's able to get into the back line. Find one. Tilter going down, and somehow they have turned the tide. Evictus tries to charge forward, but Asor is able to do uh, dodge that for just a second, still delaying things on out as Evictus is going to try and hit that defuse, but he still needs to clear out the rest of the site. Getting chased down now. Gasman still holding on to that G maneuver. He can pop that at any moment. He's trying to wait for as long as possible and finally uses it there. Gasman now going on in. Evictus will fall, and somehow Tekka Dynasty is keeping Keeping this map alive five seconds no one even close to that point and they will get the mega charge off in wow. the end and it looked like it was just an over committal it's like you know the victory the victory you know you, you saw the finish line there and skill issue ended up popping five five g maneuvers thinking this map was over but the simple fact that they didn't get the waypoint allowed TK to come back in, Tekka Dynasty to come back in in that last moment and actually get that uh, mega charge down. Yeah, that's actually unbelievable. Oh, look at those stats. Look at that damage from Chase Slay. But that is, I, I really think that maybe they had already thought that they'd won. You know, I mean, we, we don't know for sure. Of course, we'd have to ask the team afterwards. But I think there might have been a chance that they just didn't even realize that there was somebody within that range to plant. And of course, I believe it was the uh, Exia kind of dashing over you know, from the side of uh, of Nox, uh, being able to like just kind of like do the, the whole air maneuver, the like triple dash thing over the, the mountain and barely getting that in time and it even seemed like there was players on defense there so i'm not sure exactly what happened but that was a beautiful beautiful play one second left within that uh that overtime just managed to touch it one single time then come back and then fully plant it it must have been just one of the greatest jukes of all time so great great stuff but now we're gonna have to see if skill issue can turn things around because it did feel like they were winning a lot of the situations until they weren't if that makes sense it, again, it was just overcommittal there when in what they thought was going to be the last fight. Uh, five G maneuvers being utilized there. Killer Umbrellas, I believe, was the last one to pop with that Hades, but they mm. definitely didn't need to pop all five of their G maneuvers. Um, I believe, yeah, it was Gasman who was able to make it over that wall, but Tilter had a uh, napalm down there and ready actually pulls him off. So Gasman had to run away. He had maybe 400 HP remaining and then came back once again for that second plant while everyone else was focused on um, the waypoint coming on in. But here we go. It's gonna be the offense now for skill issue. I don't think they really changed much uh, up here. Uh, they do have killer umbrellas on that Xia ready to dive in with the Davester. Um, Barbados here, we saw that first push coming out from Tekka Dynasty. They tried to jump over that wall. You can see Gasman is playing that same uh, similar position with Barbados, just controlling that high ground. Yeah, this is uh, this is a great spot to hold, honestly, on defense for the Barbados, because you can jump uh, to like one of three different areas, wherever you need to be, right? You just use the mobility, but oh, it looks like we're gonna have the Barbados versus Barbados again, and Gasman once again gonna come out on top of that. Of course, this wasn't exactly 1v1. This is more of like a, holy crap, there's Barbados above me. Uh, but again, this is like the exact same thing that happened. It's the exact mirror of the previous round where we're gonna see the 1v1 Barbados and the Barbados loses to the turn A, so uh, we Weird mirroring. We're just watching a replay, I think, just in different oh. areas of the map. Overextension, though, coming out uh, from Tekka Dynasty there. Ended up losing out on Hawklight. And you kind of want that extra armor for that Dom of the presence of being able to spam around the corners as well. And that's going to allow Skill Issue now to charge forward and get that waypoint. Killer Umbrellas in a 2v1 in the back line does have Nox there, but never mind. All of a sudden, <laughs> it's a 5v2 as all of Skill Issue charges forward now for point A. Yeah, again, interesting to prioritize point A. We've seen 99.9%. .9%, we've literally seen only one time where A was prioritized in these previous tournaments, and uh, it did work out, but you now we've seen both teams prioritize A here, and we are going to see a trade again, one for one. Daves are going down, Hawklight on the other side, and we're going to see this high ground being held by Tilter, which is just such a great spot for this Ashmar. But Dark Investor actually managing to get up there and try to challenge it himself. Yeah, you got to be careful though. Gasman has fallen here for Tekka Dynasty. And so unfortunately, despite getting that two kill opening and that advantage, they will not be able to get much more. And so they have to reapproach this one. Still four members here for skill issue. And they are kind of funneling into this one a little bit too much. You can see Hawklight has given up that high ground and now he's getting chased down by Davester. He should have the rest of his team here to back him up. Jay Slade and Tilter now getting flanked as Gasman comes in from behind. And that will be Tekka Dynasty finding a few more along with that res on the Hawklight. 
Yeah, and this can for sure be one of the reasons why I think you don't want to prioritize A, is if you don't get that initial push off, you start just funneling through, and it is a very easy choke point or set of choke points for the defensive team to just look at, hit you with long range stuff. They can be sitting at a number of different angles. It's not like you can just shoot back at them in one particular spot. And I think it's why we tend to see B, right? You force them into a brawl, into a closer range brawl. Oh, I didn't even notice that we, it looks like we had the, uh, the retake here on the waypoint. So very, very smart stuff from the defensive side. Looks like we're getting back again but it looks like the push may go to be this time and it definitely has already but nox is turning things around despite being able to get the uh make a charge down onto point b nox with that trans down finds maybe the fourth kill in just a moment narrowly missing that out but they will be able to pick that one up onto evictus and now they don't even have the waypoint because of gas man playing that flanker playing that backliner winning his duel up against the barbados and that's going to allow them to go for that defuse gas man is back here once again jay slay caught out by himself will fall gas man picking that one up Tekka Dynasty turning things around here as that Screaming Nimbus is utilized to chase down the rest of the members of Skill Issue. The Hades being utilized here as well. So a lot of G maneuvers actually used on this push, but on the side of Skill Issue, they've only got Davester's uh, G maneuver coming up now with only 40 seconds remaining. Yeah, that was such a great coordinated uh, defensive push just with all those G maneuvers at the same time. But I mean, now they don't have any. Regardless, the other side is only going to have Davesters potentially. We are going to see, though, actually the... Oh, I'm sorry. There was two just activated as I spoke because I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, and they are going to use that to get this final push on B. They are going to get that waypoint potentially. Or actually, they don't even get control it right now. Nobody controls it. But this needs to be the push that makes it happen. We're going to see Davester go down. Uh, Methods on the other side, a robot going down as well. This high ground for the uh, Dom is huge, but it looks like they're actually going to see a push on both sides. Kind of a split push. And will this plant go off? No, Tilter oh. is not able to finish that one off. And so that means Tekka Dynasty, despite losing on the first map, they are going to be able to bring this one back and get the dub here on Corey, sending themselves on to the next round in the upper bracket. Yeah, wow. That was an extremely strong hold. I have to say, I was very impressed by the switch to the Barbados from Gasman. That was uh, a really, really effective switch. And it's tough, too. You know, you have a Barbados specialist on the other side. Do you really want to try to kind of match Barbados for Barbados? But I think it worked beautifully, especially on that map. And I wonder if this is a suit that we're going to be seeing more as the day goes on. I mean, the Brawler uh, Bash Brothers combo coming out from Gasman and Nox with that Exia, with that Barbados. Play this one expertly. Nox is actually holding on to his Trans Amps for some huge value throughout this map, especially on Quarry. It was fantastic to see. But yeah, like you said, getting that pickup from Gasman, making that swap off onto the Barbados, it looked like he was definitely practiced on it. Oh, for sure, 100%. I mean, just landing so many shots. I gotta say, you know, I've personally tried Barbados so many times. I wanna make that suit work. I am just so bad at that suit. I cannot explain how bad I am. It feels like all of my hitboxes are like one inch in front of me and everybody else that I play, they're like a mile in front of me. So that, the point is that that suit is very actually hard to play at a high competitive level, right? Like, sure, you can go literally stomp scrubs uh, with the character, but like when you see these players play with Barbados, it is so, so impressive because the mobility on the other side when you're trying to, you know, the people you're trying to hit is uh, is going to be strong. You know, at this level of competition, it's going to be strong. So uh, great stuff to, to all the Barbados players so far. Yeah. And uh, again, I, I was not really expecting Barbados to um, have the kind of presence that it has so far. I mean, this is still the first match of the day. We still have plenty to see, but I'm glad that we are seeing a shakeup in terms of the compositions, right? Uh, for the last few events, it's been fairly... Uh, what, Pale Rider centric, uh, I, I guess, uh, is the best way to put it. Um, we had a smattering of that turn A, but it looks like maybe for this one or uh, for this go around, it might actually be the Barbados. Yeah, I mean, also the turn A's though, right? I mean, we, we've seen the turn A's do really well on this, yeah. on this, uh, this, I guess, set, this so far, this set, all of the maps that we've seen this set. So I, I just, I'm glad that we're continuing to see differences in team comps overall basically is, is what i'm trying to say and uh i mean really well fought again i just want to reiterate that tech dynasty has only two of their previous players from the previous tournaments they have entered every single tournament so far uh, as team tech but uh dark infester and one other that i'm totally blank on right now are the only ones remaining they have a bunch of new pickups and it looks like they're gelling really well together as a team so that is uh that's really great to see but i do believe that while we set up for the next match we are going to be going to a short break uh can i get a 
can, is that true production? I just want to make sure. I want to make 100 percent sure. We've got a, a lot going on here. Again, we're so glad that we have the spectator client, so uh, we get the chance to see everything. Okay, so that is a confirmation that we are going to be going to a short break as we set up for the next match. So don't go anywhere because we're going to be back with more Celestial Salt right after this. <laughs> 